I have a confession to make. I want to be a polyglot. I love languages, both large and small, with the only languages I currently mildly disfavor being English and French. There are so many unique and fun languages all around the world, the majority of which you've probably never even heard of, and today I want to talk about one of those small languages specifically. You've read the title, today I want to talk about Livonian, a language so small that when I talk about it to people in real life, the response I usually get is, what is that? And short answer, it's a formerly extinct language in Latvia that used to be spoken in these coastal areas and now officially has one native speaker with a few hundred people at conversational level. Now if that answer satisfies your curiosity, then great, please leave a like on the way out. But if you're curious on how Livonian snorted the fine line between life and death so precisely, then you're in the right place. You see, there is more to Livonian than meets the eye. Historically, Livonian has always been a small language. The highest estimate I've seen about how many people spoke Livonian in the past is on Wikipedia, and that estimates around 30,000 Livonian speakers during the 13th century. 30,000 people! And quite honestly, if we think about it more realistically, that's not even that small of a number. Hell, Sorbian has slightly less than that, and I love Sorbian! <laughs> I'm not sure where that was going. but. 30,000 would still be enough for several large villages and towns with schools, administration, literature. It's a livable number if you can maintain it. But that didn't happen. Over the course of several centuries, Livonian became weaker. They didn't have any real cultural exports, and the larger languages surrounding them, like Latvian, were slowly chipping away at their lands and at the reasons why anyone would even speak Livonian. Quick side note, by the way, but I'm counting the four tribes of Latgalian, Selonian, Semigallian, and Koronian as Latvian, since they slowly merged and evolved over the centuries into what is now modern-day Latvian. I think. I'm a little unsure, to be honest. Anyways, the standards of living were higher in some Latvian-speaking areas. Trade was easier if you spoke Latvian, and most importantly of them all, Latvians were making settlements in the Livonian-speaking areas which caused Livonian to weaken even more. If this was done on purpose, it would likely be classified as an act of ethnic cleansing in the modern times. And while the names may sound similar, Livonian isn't mutually legible with Latvian. As a matter of fact, they are both part of different language families altogether, so trade between them would be nearly impossible if there wasn't a Latvian-speaking Livonian or a Livonian-speaking Latvian, which were probably more rare since there weren't many benefits to knowing Livonian back then, aside for trade. Even fundamental words like yes or no are extremely different. Here's a list of Livonian and Latvian words and sentences that will hopefully demonstrate the large differences between the two of them. Take a moment to really appreciate the word list here. This took me several hours to make. It's nice, isn't it? Complex yet simplistic. Uh, anyway... Over time, Livonian began to wane, as the Eastern dialect called Salaka Livonian actually went extinct between the 18th and 19th century, but this death wasn't peaceful. The Christian clergy reportedly banned or floated the idea of banning the speaking of Livonian in public, banned teaching Livonian to your children, and also destroyed sacred Livonian lands in order to break the people and get them to Christianize, supposedly. This is my source, please tell me if this is true. This move killed Livonian in Vizeme and left the language with only Kurland as a place where Livonian was spoken in the Kurland dialect. Kurland Livonian somehow kept on going as well. They were weakened and ravaged, and the language had almost died several times, but bounced back every time holding on for dear life. And that brings us to slightly more recent times. Livonian had approximately 3,000 speakers in the 1800s, which is more than East Frisian in the modern day. Not a lot, but not too little. That number had halved to 1,500 by the mid-1900s, and kept shrinking from that point onwards, practically nosediving with Soviet occupation. There are two main factors that contributed to the near demise of Livonian from this point onwards. The first is mobilization in the Second World War on both the Soviet and German sides, where after many died. Uh, and the second is, everyone say it with me now, Soviet deportations. Soviet deportations were and are, for lack of better words, horrific. Millions of people from Poland, Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus and the Baltics were killed or forcibly relocated to Siberia. The majority of those relocated were forced to live the rest of their lives in prison camps in unlivable conditions, with a sizable minority also dying on the way there. These deportations were happening at the same time that partisans from the Baltics and other regions were fighting the Red Army to try and get their sovereignty after the war. Now, these deportations were aimed at just, just anyone that could be a threat, anyone that was too culturally dissimilar, or just anyone who was unlucky enough to be caught in the crossfire. Women, children, didn't matter who, and Livonian faced a real chance of extinction. 
The last factor why Livonian faced a real chance of extinction would be because the last few remaining Livonian towns were turned into a Soviet border zone and the inhabitants were forced to migrate inland for work, scattering the language across the vast fields of Latvia. These deportations hadn't killed Livonian completely, but they did get close. So when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, there was nothing that really could be done anymore. Latvia wanted to protect the language upon their independence, and several Livonian preservation groups were established, but there were few native speakers and many people that did know Livonian natively weren't located in Latvia anymore. The fact of the matter had become clear. Livonian would go extinct. Which is exactly what happened in 2013, when the last fluent Livonian native speaker, Griselda Kristina, passed away, which caused UNESCO to announce that the language had gone extinct. But let's be honest here. What does UNESCO have to say about Livonian? Imagine you are a native Livonian speaker. Would you go public with that information if you know that the only thing that will really happen is that a bunch of people will wait for your death in order to declare the language you grew up with extinct? It's understandable that remaining native Livonians wouldn't go public anymore. They are people too. Also, if Livonian really had gone extinct, then I wouldn't be making a video about how it's still alive, now would I? Don't answer that, I definitely would. You see, Livonian hadn't fully died out yet. There were no official native speakers, sure, but there were still potentially dozens of people that could speak the language at a good, comprehensible or even native level, with a few hundred people being able to speak some basic words and sentences as well. The language preservation movement was still in full swing, and it quickly became apparent that the flame of Livonian wasn't out just yet. Now, at this point I was going to talk about the one official native Livonian speaker, Kuldi Medne, who is raised with Livonian, but that situation seems to be over-sensationalized at best and quite tragic at worst. But there are a plethora of different things people are doing for Livonian as well. You see, there is a small but growing interest for Livonian to become a conversational language again, and with enough effort and support from the Latvian government, I believe it could be possible. The Latvian government has since 2023 installed roadsides in both Livonian and Latvian in the Talsi municipality in Courland, which has historically been a Livonian-speaking area. Livonian revivalists have also been making some new books and songs in Livonian and have translated some pre-existing Latvian literature. And while there are people protesting these developments, I believe that the future of Livonian is looking up for now. But future success of the language could greatly depend on a single person. ME! <laughs> that was a joke. There is no single person that can carry the language on their own. Instead, the efforts from Livonian language unions could greatly impact the future of the language. If some young people want to learn the language, and the Latvian government is supportive of revitalization efforts, then I could imagine that in the next hundred years there could be several villages that will partially speak Livonian again. And that thought makes me happy. And I hope it makes you happy too, because this is Livonian, which is one of the languages I like. Have a good day. Or should I say, Ulzu 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 Kutz Politicio Lopta Polax Ashtayara